Okay. I'm not a financial analyst, of course. I'm, I don't have a great deal of academic um, background in finances. I did try to write a bit of a book. But I want to kind of break down what I think might happen in the next little while. And I know that there are many videos out there that have forecasted doom and gloom throughout the past. And, and this might amount to just that, really. To be honest, uh, it's, it's very possible that what I'm going to say won't come out even close to what's going to happen. But I, I do think that um, from the deep research that I've done in this field, although it's been autodidactic, which kind of means that it's self-studied, it's not you know, formal education per se, uh, I nevertheless feel somewhat confident that something along these lines uh, will unfold probably in the next few years. And what I'm going to kind of outline is much to the... It's very akin to people like Mike Maloney's thinking, um, where there's something like a deflation process, and then we move into uh, an inflationary event. And so it's paradoxical because they don't really seem to join very well. Uh, so you need to sync this together to really get the understanding of what that would mean for you as a person and the kind of steps that might be useful in taking. So that the primary focus on this is to uh, give you a little bit of forethought on the kind of things, the road signs that might take place in the next little while. So that you can take precautionary events if and when they do start to unfold in that way. Um, another person that I really like in this field, and he's a little bit raw and uncut, is, is a man named Glenn who does some work called uh, Under the Banner of Financial Turmoil um, uh, Explained, I think it's called. Uh, again, he's pretty raw and uncut, and you know, uh, I think he's actually beyond me in my knowledge in many respects, as, as of course Mike Maloney is. Uh, but those are the two people that I think might have it the closest from my years of studying this, this particular area. So what, what those guys kind of suggest, and I'll just kind of do broad outlines, is that in and around, um, you know, a certain time within the next decade, uh, I'm thinking within the next year or two actually, uh, maybe within the next few months potentially, uh, we're going to see a deflationary event. And so what that would mean is that uh, your purchasing power of your dollar would actually uh, go up, you know, maybe not a huge amount, but it would go up, especially in the United States. Um, but it, it would also uh, get synced up with uh, essentially banks kind of uh, locking their doors. And you, maybe, you know, you might be able to get out $30, $50 or $100 or $200 a day, but very, very limited. And this could be um, preceded or caused in many respects by something as simple as like Deutsche Bank uh, going bankrupt. And I mean Deutsche Bank is a huge, huge bank, but its derivatives book is, is so in massive. And you might fault me for saying that because I know that, uh, you know, derivatives, which are a, a big market, uh, kind of, they're a futures market, um, a speculative market, they do cancel each other out, if I'm not mistaken, for to large measure. But there's still a huge amount of it that I think, from my understanding, won't be canceled out. So, let's say that, you know, and I think I'm being very um, conservative with this, that uh, Deutsch has, you know, ten or fifteen trillion dollars in derivatives. So if they go under, maybe only uh, a couple hundred billion would be, uh, you know, the impact on the, the overall market. But uh, given the tightening of liquidity in the last little while, which means that people are kind of hoarding uh, their money and not putting it back into, um, into the, the streams of the economy. So that's, that's something technically called the velocity of money. And you can, you can learn about that in Mike Maloney's kind of Secrets of Money, uh, which I highly recommend digging into. I think particularly number five, if you're really looking to get your most bang out of your buck, look into that. Um, but velocity of money really means that, you know, when I go out and I go
go to a taxi and I spend that dollar and then the taxi goes and buys gas and then the gas station um, you know purchases gas from uh, their supplier that means there's the velocity of money three and when people uh, are worried or apprehensive about the future, they start to uh, hoard their dollars. So we've seen this in Weimar, Germany. Uh, in essence, when the war broke out, people would hoard their money because they didn't know what the future would bring. And they needed to think that they had some confidence with a store of wealth for the future. And then later when it broke out, that flooded the markets, which brought on some hyperinflation. So I think a similar process is going to kind of take place a little bit here. A little bit different, but you know that that's that's something to keep in mind when we get into this a little bit more. So, with with the deflationary event, uh, which could again happen, in my opinion, within months, um, we would see, in essence, uh, the banks start to uh, you know stop uh, you know allowing any withdrawals of money, and so it's very important to have in my opinion a few few dollars tucked away just in case that does happen um, in fiat but you don't want to keep that too long and here's why because down the road uh, when the Fed comes out or in our case the central bank in Canada here comes out and announce, announces a big shiny uh, plan in essence to, to uh, deal with the deflation and the bank closures there's going to be some sort of bail, bailout, just as there was in 2008. That's about the only uh, trick in their book to, to really solve this kind of crisis. So they will be, in that sense, uh, I think, very reasonably, a response that would, uh, in essence, say we're going to do some big sp spending. And this could be like helicopter drops or um, guaranteed basic incomes, which means everybody gets maybe $30,000. Or another option would be that all your taxes are from all the work that you've done in your past gets back paid to you. So you might get a check of $100,000. But here's the thing, when that and if that does happen, you want to spend that as quick as you can because hyperinflation is coming very fast, if that's the case. So in essence, when that money starts to roll into the economy, it's going to um, you know, flood the economy in essence, and that's going to jack up prices very, very quickly. So you don't want to walk to the store, you want to run, spend it as quick as you can, or move it into uh, safer assets. And that's where things like gold and silver historically have played a very pivotal role in these sorts of situations. Fiat currencies historically have only lasted uh, approximately 30 years at the max. We're at about, you know, 41, I think, right now with our current. Uh, current fiat system and that's global that's global so it's a very systemic situation and uh, you know that's since 1971 when Nick, Richard Nixon dropped the gold back standard and since then the dollar has floated it's not tied directly to anything and that's a little bit wrong because the American dollar is kind of tied to uh, oil but that's even now a little bit estranged because uh, China just recently had a petro yuan dollar uh, situation, which is now challenging the American petro dollar. So that is another reason to think that something along these lines might be uh, brewing very much. So in essence, uh, that that transition when the Fed announces that we're going to have this shiny new bailout plan, money's going to flood in. And, it, you know, things will be rosy, actually, for the first little while. There's going to be uh, a real recovery that sort of takes place at that point. Uh, you know, it'll feel like, you know, for the first time in a long time, things are, the, the, the plants are blooming around you, you know, in the sense that, that uh, you really can kind of have some, some money in, in your pocket. But that's going to quickly lose its value. Um, so there's only a few safe havens here, really. Uh, silver and gold historically have been a safe haven. You can have, to some degree, solid assets, but even they, you know, in this sort of context, are going to lose value pretty quickly. You know, a house that's a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars could just stay as two hundred, two hundred thousand dollars roughly, even through the inflation period. Well, well, that's you know, bubbles to you know, really just a couple thousand uh, dollars in in context of what you can actually do with it you know buy bread and buy food stuff in particular so 
um, gold and silver historically at least have held their value. So diversification is a good idea. Things like cryptocurrency in the deflationary event will probably drop pretty dramatically because they're a speculative bet. You can't really spend them right now. And this is particularly true with the recent event of the Wavecrest, which is the the t debit token cards that you could actually use and, and at an ATM and get physical fiat from your uh, your uh, cryptocurrency. So in that sense, it was spendable. But now, uh, given that all the debit cards have been shut off, it's not really spendable. So it's even more speculative. So it's very reasonable to think that during a deflationary event, even though cryptos have dropped significantly, there might be a run up in the next little while, but during that event, it'll probably drop off pretty significantly. But here's the thing, right after that Fed policy is announced, you might have a day or two, then it's probably very likely that stocks and cryptocurrencies are going to go up very dramatically, very quickly. Um, so you might have a, a great buying opportunity at that lowest part if and only if you can actually get money into the system to do it because remember the banks and so forth will very likely be closed at that point. So the, the big winner through this, if this is the case, is probably silver 